Hey, welcome back. I'm Brett of the Wall Twins and flying solo yet again in Brett's Brickyard Beast Row. And man, times are so busy right now with Adam and I with work. It is the fall season. Adam is a, is a high school teacher, so there's a lot with the kids going to football games on Friday nights and the weekends. So we're trying to get together as soon as we can. But in the meantime, we got to still keep cooking because the show must go on. So here we are for yet another Undemon, a banger in the beast. We're bringing chops to the flat top. Now, we've done pork chops in the past. We did them on our Blackstone, on the cold rolled steel, and we've had a lot of people ask, are they just as good on the ceramic as they are on the Blackstone, as they are on the cold rolled steel? The answer is yes. Adam and I have both done these, but we haven't thought to do it for the channel to show you how it's done and how easy this is. Before we get to that, we wanna remind you, we do have the Epic Outdoor Griddle Cookbook available for pre-order on Amazon. So and we'd love for you to go check it out and pre-order it if you'd like it. It's gonna be available on January 17th. So that, we have the information in the link below. Now, real quick, let's get to the groceries of what we're throwing into these chops. First, a front and center right there. We've got these butterfly cut loin chops right here, very lean, so we're gonna have to put a lot of seasoning on here. We're doing green beans today. We've got salt and pepper and garlic paste that we're gonna be using to season these. Also, we've got these southern style potatoes we're gonna be throwing down as well. We've got Uncle Steve's original shake. We're gonna be seasoning it with those. Salt and pepper and garlic for the green beans. And the usual suspects right here as I'm turning down around our label that we'll be seasoning these chops with and we're going to be basing them in this butter. So a lot of butter, actually butter is being used for all parts of this cook, but especially the pork chops. So there's the groceries, let's get to the griddle. All right, first things we're gonna do is lay down about two tablespoons of butter before we get the, the uh, potatoes the on. And of course we know that it's gonna run slightly this way because of the way that the griddle is sitting. I'm not too worried about that though. Once this gets melted nice and goodly down, Yes, I said goodly. Then we will be tossing the potatoes on and the seasoning we Adam and I have learned is hold off on the seasoning with the potatoes because the potatoes tend to take a lot longer to cook. So the seasoning, seasoning can start to blacken. It looks burnt, it's not. So we're gonna hold off. So we're just gonna lay the potatoes down first. After a few minutes, we're gonna get the green beans going because they're also gonna take about five to seven minutes to cook. So the fastest part of this whole thing is actually the chops themselves. So there we go. And now we're going to layeth the potato with down it. Look at all those delicious looking potatoes. Just a mountain of potatoes. Oh, these are beautiful. And then we want to kind of flatten these. Now these are from frozen. We just took these out of the freezer probably what, Sherry, about 10 minutes ago. So they are still a little bit th uh, frozen, maybe slightly thawed, which is just fine. But. Here we go, we're just gonna get these potatoes going. And no, we actually don't need this many for the two plates we're making tonight, but here we are. Again, like I said, in, uh, not too long ago, uh, you know, mom always said, don't play with food. Well, if you're an adult like us, and you wanna play with your food, get yourself a griddle, because you have to play with your food. I mean, look at this, it's a lot of fun. In just a few minutes, we're gonna start to season these as these are starting to soften up and warm up and then we're gonna want them to start crisping up. So while those are going here, right here, I'm gonna throw some more butter down and get the green beans going. Right, next, we're gonna throw down the green beans. Before we do, gotta toss a little bit more oil down. Oh, oil, butter. And it's funny that I actually, <laughs> Probably a mistake there of saying oil because this is butter. And one of the things that I actually wanted to address on this specific cook is the fact that people that were asking about the ceramic top and the cold rolled steel. This with the ceramic, we do not use oil hardly at all, unless we're doing like a shallow fry, one of those griddle fries, because uh, this is nonstick. It doesn't need the oil, but we like the butter and we use it for flavoring. So we're doing that. And then also the difference between the ceramic and the cold rolled steel, uh, Adam and I are absolutely in love with both styles with both units. Now, the one thing that we have found, we're drawn a little more to the ceramic, is kind of like we compare it to the cast iron skillet that just about everyone has for their inside cooking, as well as the ceramic pans that they have for the stove top. You, you have both, but chances are nine times out of 10, you're grabbing the ceramic for your quick cook, a quick clean, and then you put away. With the cast iron skillet, it, it has that love. It has the years of love and the cooking into it. And so you have it for that. It requires a little bit more maintenance. For this, it's the exact same way. When I'm done with this, I will uh, wipe it down, wash it down with soap and water, dry it, and it is done and ready to cook again. We just had family night the other night and I cooked our, our chicken street tacos. My cousin Logan was out here and he thought that I actually 
just went and got a brand new unit. This is the same Sierra I've had since, since day one. It's the same one. I do have the advantage that I get stored in the garage so it's out of the elements, but still with a ceramic top, it's easier to maintain. We save on, uh, we don't use, like I said, hardly any oil on this. And uh, so it's, it always looks brand new. It always looks clean. So that's just some of the things I want to talk about while we're waiting for these, uh, these uh, vegetables to cook down. All right, as you can see, some of the green beans are starting to brown. We got some potatoes starting to brown. So one thing I wanna do now with the green beans is I'm going to add the garlic paste and the salt and pepper. All right, so I'm gonna lay down a little bit of garlic paste, about that much. That is a good amount. And then I'm gonna throw in some salt and pepper. They are in effect. And now we wanna get these all danced. So all the flavors can really get in there well. Oh, the browning on these green beans is beautiful. It's got that nice little char. Oh, that smell. We've got garlic, we've got butter, salt, and pepper. This is going to be a delicious side to these pork chops. Uh, one thing that people ask a lot of times is what temperature are we cooking at? Most times we're cooking on low, but this one I've got on medium low. So you'll see that I've got these dials on medium, medium low or medium, where it looks like basically if you imagine this is a clock, this is about eight o'clock. The eight on a clock is where it's at because we, in fact, I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit more to get these uh, potatoes cooking a little bit quicker. So a few more minutes, we'll go ahead and we're gonna slide everything over here where I have this zone off, this burner off. And so we'll keep that as a warming station while we do the chops. All right, so we're gonna take about the next two minutes. We're gonna close the lid and just let these cook. That's that's where we're all at now. We're just we're just in the waiting process. Now I could turn the other burner on and get the pork chops going, but I kind of want to show you a step by step process of getting this meal done. So so far we're about seven eight minutes in from the time we started throwing the first potatoes down. Right. It's been a couple of minutes. Let's take a look at these. Oh, look at this nice steam that's coming out of there. They are getting nice and soft now. Now we just want these to crisp up and brown up a little bit, the potatoes, and then we're gonna season them. As far as the green beans, we're gonna take a little taste to see how they're out. They're a little al dente, uh, more al dente than we like. We do want them to be a little firm, we have a little bit of a snap when we bite into them, but, um, but not as much as they were just a minute ago. So we're gonna take a taste and see if these are ready to pull. All right, so now it's time to season the potatoes. They're nice and warm and they're getting nice and soft, which is what we're looking for before they crisp up. So now it's time to season them. We always love to go with the Uncle Steve's original for our fries, things like that. Potatoes, if you will. So here we go and we're going to just layeth the seasoneth down. And yes, we are going to be pretty generous with this because we're just doing this one side and then we're gonna toss them, okay? And here we go. Gonna toss the potatoes. Make sure we get everybody in the pool. There we go. All right, now we're just gonna let these sit for a minute. We're gonna take a taste. And then I think these are gonna be ready to pull as well as the beans. Now, one thing about cooking is you always wanna taste as you go about. And uh, we just tasted the uh, the green beans. They're really good. They've got the garlic, the salt and pepper and the butter, but we feel like, man, it needs just a little bit more. In a recipe we saw earlier, it said garlic powder. We thought that the garlic paste would have taken the care of that, but we're like, you know what? Let's put some usual suspects on that and uh, just give it a little, just a light dusting. And then we're gonna toss those. And by the way, the beans are just about done. They're just about to the uh, the doneness that we like, the level of al dente. See that nice little char that they're getting on there? Absolutely love that. Adds a, adds a little bit of extra, uh, another note to these. All right, the beans are just about ready, so we're gonna now slide them over to the uh, warming station and they will continue to cook. You can see these are getting nice and brown and cooked up. <clears throat> By the way, these potatoes are really good for uh, breakfast cooks. All right, now before we lay these pork chops down, we're gonna put a nice amount of butter down. We're gonna be using a lot of this butter to base, much like we do when we do our steaks. To, and we're gonna actually cook this a lot like the steaks, but we want the butter down first. It's gonna kind of help protect the uh, seasoning, which I put a lot of usual suspects on right before I actually brought the pork chops over. I should have put the seasoning on a little earlier so it could sit and kind of soak into the pork chops, but 
that's okay. It's gonna be just fine. This is gonna be very delicious. Like I said, we have done this before on this griddle. We just haven't done it for the channel. So this is all we just wanna show you how we do it. All right, first chop is going down. That nice little sizzle going. Now I did turn the temp down a little bit on this because we did not wanna burn it. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit now because this thing was screaming pretty hot as I had the potatoes and the green beans cooking on a pretty high temp. So we've got the chops down. We're gonna let them sit and cook in that butter for about three to four minutes. We're gonna check. We want them to start cooking up about halfway through. We're gonna then flip them, put butter underneath, and then we're gonna put pats of butter on top, and then we're gonna continue to base the butter on. But in the meantime, we've got about two or three minutes. We're just gonna kinda let them continue to cook. All right, now it's getting good coloring underneath, but one thing I, I can't believe I forgot to do, I wanted to lay the press on it because these are starting to kinda curl up from the inside. Their bellies are kinda like poking in. So so we're gonna layeth the choppeth down. Sure, we're gonna do this, put this press on it for just a minute before we flip and that will just get the, uh, the chops to lay flat so they'll get a nice crustification all along the bottom. All right, so it's been on for about two minutes and these chops are ready to flip. So I got my tongs and we're going to flip. Look at that crustification, but you see how it kind of curled up. That's why we got the press on it. And that's why we're going to, actually one thing I forgot to do is get the butter ready to put underneath. So I'm gonna do this real quick, get some butter underneath and lay it on, lay the, the chops on top and then we will be good to go. So I got butter down, this butter goes there. And then we are going to layeth the presseth down. See that butter splash out. So now after a minute of, of doing this, to make sure these flatten out a bit, I'm going to then start basting with the butter. We've got a good amount of butter that's kind of running out the back here. I'm gonna add even a little more, and then we'll use a spatula to kind of baste and make sure that these things stay bathed in the butter for a flavor that's just out of this world. And if you can get a pork chop to taste like a steak, you're cooking it right. These are gonna taste just like some of the best steak you've ever had. Try this method, but we're gonna continue to cook, and here we go. there, half there. We're gonna flip these one more time and look at that beautiful crust. Now you can see, like I said, remember it was flipping up. So we didn't quite get the, the darkness that we wanted right there, but we got it all the way across that butterfly wishbone looking piece right there. This is gonna be so delicious. One thing I'm really excited about is using this Dow Strong Valhalla. This is a chef's knife cleaver hybrid. Look how beautiful that is. They do such a good job with all the detail. Yes, Adam and I do have a link where you can get hooked up with this as well as all of their knives down below. We are so excited to partner and work with Dow Strong and we love these knives so much. They're the sharpest knives and I finally understand why people spend a little extra money for their knives, the people that do, from chefs to cooks to prep cooks. There it is in all its glory. We have made a complete dinner dish right here on the Pit Boss Sierra, and I'm so excited to dig into this thing. This thing is cooked to perfection. Now, gotta remember, this was a very lean cut of meat, so uh, we had to season it really well, and um, it, now it's just 
time to time to enjoy. But like we say, it can look amazing. Sherry? Looks amazing. Like we say, it can smell amazing. Can I get a smell, yeah? Smell, yeah. Yeah, you can, but if this doesn't taste amazing, this is all for naught now. I'm gonna go with the first bite of the chop right here. Has a little bit of fat cap right there on that piece. So I know that's gonna be uh, full of flavor as well, but here we go. Cheers, I'll eat to that, my brother. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's exactly how you want it to taste. It tastes like a steak. It is very tender, very easy to sink your teeth into. Seasoned to perfection with the usual suspects. Has that salt, pepper, has garlic in there. It's got a little bit of MSG. It's got garlic powder, so much of this into it. So, like that. and with this bite, I want to do this. I'll get some potatoes, get some green beans, get that bite, and lost potatoes. Here we go. Mm. That is winner, winner, pork chop dinner, right there. Pork chop is per cooked to perfection. It was maybe 10 minutes total time on the flat top, would you say, Sherry? Mary was very lean, so it wanted to bowl up. So you just put that press on it, and this is absolutely amazing. Yes, it's just as good as it was on the cold roll still. I'd say maybe even better, zero oil was used. The only thing we used was butter, which added flavor to this. So if this gave you an idea of something that you could do on your outdoor griddle, make sure and give this a thumbs up. It's one way in which you can support the channel. It's not too hot here. This is just such a hot plate. I'm sweating. Another way you can support us is through our merchandise. We have a link for that in the description below. And then of course, we got our book, The Epic Outdoor Griddle Cookbook. It is out, uh, well, it's actually available for pre-order on Amazon right now. We've got that link down below, as well as all your favorite bookstores. You can get it on pre-order and it will be out January 17th. So again, thanks to everyone that has supported us thus far and pre-order the book. We do have some specials going for you for everyone that does pre-order it. So aside from coming and make like I said, another banger in the bistro. This was 100% a banger right here. This pork chop on the Pit Boss Sierra griddle, the ceramic, we absolutely love it. Clean, clean up is gonna be a cinch. We're gonna put it right back. We're gonna turn on some TV and enjoy these chops. So, aside from coming and doing all that, why do we do this? Because all we do is twin, no matter what. And with that, we bid you adieu, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on!